Welcome to Cassava Matters on television. Uh, this is a show that we want to teach our viewers how to cultivate cassava, how to grow cassava profitably and be able to get increased productivity, increased yield of cassava. Um, and then to be able to um, maximize the benefits of uh, being a cassava farmer. If you want to grow cassava for export, you should have enough to be able to export. And if your aim is uh, just to grow and to feed your family, uh, then you should have enough of cassava that will take care of your family, but also be able to uh, sell and make a living from it. And if your goal is just to go into processing, uh, then you should have enough raw materials that can sustain your industry. My name is Godwin Atze. I'm the digital extension and advisory services expert at the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture. Cassava is a very important uh, crop. Um, it's a very important staple um, in Africa, uh, contributing to food security of over 300 million people uh, who depend on the crop. But the interesting thing about cassava is that it can be you know, processed into several um, uh, food uh, commodities like gari, uh, fufu, um, lafun. There are also several uses of cassava in the industry in terms of processing into starch, for instance, uh, processing of cassava into ethanol, um, and so on and so forth. Um, let us listen to what Dr. Bernard Van La from the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture has to say about the uses and importance of cassava. Nigeria has become the biggest producer of cassava in the world. <laughs> But more importantly, cassava is also becoming a raw material for the processing sector. So it's uh, still a huge food security crop, but also at the same time providing cash for people. Despite the importance of cassava, there are still uh, constraints to cassava production, cassava productivity in Africa. Um, and these uh, constraints include um, weed management, for instance, um, but also when you look at the seed system, um, most of the seeds that are used uh, in cassava cultivation come from the local varieties and even the agronomy of the crop itself. Uh, there's little knowledge about the agronomy of the cassava crop. And this, uh, this pose great constraints to cassava uh, production. Let us listen to what uh, Dr. Alfred Dixon a director with the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture uh, based here in Ibadan has to say about the constraints of cassava. Cassava is important in Africa since its introduction from Latin America because over 300 to 500 million people in Africa depend on this crop for their food security. Cassava is grown in several countries in Sub-Saharan Africa. But initially, it was taken as an orphan poor man's crop. But because of it, its diverse utilization, it has become such an important crop not only for food security, but for income generation, making it a very important livelihood crop. I have always said that uh, just providing high yielding varieties is not the only thing. It has to go with the good agronomic practices like correct time of planting, correct plant population, and most importantly, weed control. Weed control is a serious constraint in cassava production. And in fact, that's why the small older farmers cannot increase their farm size. As they start weeding, continue weeding, the earlier part weeded becomes weeded and they can spend the whole year weeding, particularly in the humid forest zone. So 
having a project like the one we already have, the cassava weed management project, has provided a very great means of controlling weeds in cassava farmers' uh, fields. And with the compelling extension message that we developed from that project, it's helping to revolutionize cassava in terms of providing higher yields that farmer can generate surplus and sell to industries. And also, because of the improved cassava weed management that we've come up with using agronomic factors, using herbicides, farmers can easily double their yields from the current average of 10 tons per hectare to more than 20 tons per hectare. And in some cases, with the type of improved varieties we have, farmers can even get 35 to 40 tons per hectare depending on the soil fertility status and the environment of their farms. Let us listen to what Professor Friday Ekeleme, the principal investigator of weeds at the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture uh, here in Ibadan, what he has to say about weeds in cassava. Weeds are a major problem in cassava. Uh, for the single fact that um, cassava is a slow starter. When you plant your cassava, it takes um, a few weeks to really take off properly. The first three to six weeks is very critical. In actual fact, the first three to four weeks, you must um, reduce the weed pressure on cassava. Otherwise, uh, it's going to impact on your yield. The reason uh, why cassava suffers so much from weeds is that most of the weeds crowd on the cassava. So competition is very high. I will give you a typical example. A weed like Ageratum conizoides can be managed quite easily. But the population of Ageratum in any given field is so high that any crop within their vicinity is choked. I will give you another example. There's this common weed around that is called Titonia diversifolia. Titonia grows very fast, that within three weeks or four weeks is almost approaching the height of a human being. So if you have that in a cassava field, uh, if you don't control it, the cassava is definitely going to suffer. So uh, in effect, we need to remove weeds from cassava as early as possible because the competition at the early growth stages is very, very severe. In the midst of all these challenges that we have talked about, there are solutions, and that is the good news. In the last six years, our two projects working on cassava, uh, that is the Cassava Weed Management Project and the African Cassava Agronomy Initiative, both of them join forces together to develop a toolkit that we call Six Steps to Cassava Weed Management and best planting practices. And farmers that use this toolkit have benefited a lot. One, in terms of increasing the productivity of their cassava. And then two, uh, also they've been able to um, lift the burden that weeding places on cassava. So this is one toolkit that is making a lot of impact on farm levels. Please sit back and watch a clip of this toolkit and how it works. Do you want to grow cassava and get higher yield? Here are six steps to help you achieve your dream. 1. Select a suitable site that is not on a slope, waterlogged, stony or very shallow. 2. If the vegetation is an older fallow with trees, shrubs and broad leaves and too tall to go over with a sprayer. Slash the vegetation and plow. If the vegetation is a grass fallow 
with perennial weeds such as pear grass, guinea grass, siam weed, sensitive plant or giant potato and too tall to go over with a sprayer. Slash the vegetation and wait for two weeks to allow the growth. 3. Apply glyphosate for example, Roundup Turbo, Touchdown Forte at label rate to deal with the grass regrowing from the slash grass fallow. Glyphosate should also be applied on a field if it has little vegetation, less than 1 meter tall with perennial weeds. Thereafter, wait for 14 days to allow total kill by glyphosate. 4. Tillage operations are costly but result in higher cassava yields and productive fields. Plowing generally increases ute yield by at least 5 tons per hectare. Only invest in plowing if the revenue expected from 5 tons of cassava exceeds the cost of plowing 1 hectare of land. Region increases root yield by at least 4 tons per hectare. Read your field if the revenue from 4 tons of cassava exceeds the cost of ridging 1 hectare of land. Ridging is also recommended if your soil is high in clay content or if you intend to harvest in the dry season or if weeds are difficult to control. 5. Plant cassava only when the soil is moist at 1 meter between rows and 0.8 meters within rows. Thereafter, apply pre-emergence herbicide such as Prime Extra Gold at 4 liters per hectare or Lagoon at 1.25 liters per hectare within 24 hours after planting. Do not apply pre-emergence herbicide on dry soil. Replace cuttings that fail to sprout after 15 to 21 days. 6. When weeds cover 30% of your field and they are at 4 to 6 leaf stage, apply a post-emergence weed control, for example, post-emergence herbicides, mechanical or manual weeding. In grass-dominated fields or in portions of a field that are grass-dominated, apply Fossilate 40 or 3 liters per hectare under cassava canopy for grass and or broad leaf infested fields, glufosinate ammonium for example, lifeline, buster, fascinate may be applied at label rate. Glyphosate like Roundup Turbo, Touchdown Forte and can also be carefully applied at label rate. But it is important to use a shield on the sprayer nozzle to avoid the glyphosate torching green parts of cassava which will result in cassava damage. If cassava is less than 8 weeks old and the field is infested with grass and broadleaf weeds, use manual weeding. Do not apply the same herbicides year in year out because this may promote the development of resistant weeds. In the next couple of weeks, we'll be taking you through the uh, six steps to cassava weed management, all the recommendations are step by step and we'll be glad if you uh, hook up every Thursday um, to watch this program. Thank you. <music>